going to worry about reprints because they're already available to us. So, um, got this guy, Adherent of Hope. It's a 2 1 for 2. That's completely unplayable. Alpine Watchdog, a 2 2 for 1 and a white. It's a Vigilance. I don't know that white has this creature, but um, it's like strictly worse. I mean, it is a dog, but it's like strictly worse than Loyal Cathar, for example. Um, I guess it's not strictly worse. It's one and a white instead of white white, but whatever. Not really playable, in my opinion. Um, anointed Chorist Chorister, one with lifelink, um, that has an ability where you can get give it plus three plus three for five mana. I think that ability is too much mana, so that's never gonna see play, if I had to guess. Um. I don't know why this guy's included. He's an uncommon. So we're not going to talk about him. Unless he's a common in a previous location. But then, yeah. Anyway. Bazri's Acolyte is a 2 3 with lifelink for 2 white white. And when it enters the battlefield, you can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter each of the 2 other creatures you control. It's an interesting effect, but. I think it's just going to cost too much mana, so um, not really playable. Celestial Enforcer, we have better tap target creature effects in Popper already, so I don't really see this seeing any play. Uh, Chandra's Magmut, um, I don't know, this actually might be reasonably playable in like a red deck wins kind of deck, because say you're getting fogged out or something by Tron, then it can actually just kind of turn into a Goblin Fire Slinger where it deals one damage to your opponent every turn. Uh, Concordia Pegasus, uh, we have this kind of card in Popper already, pretty sure. So 1-3 flying for 2 is not really Popper playable. Um, Daybreak Charger. This is kind of interesting, I haven't seen this one before. It's a 3 1 for 1 and a white. And when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. That's an interesting effect. I don't think I've seen that um, before. Maybe playable in like White Weenie or something. It's kind of an extra. It's like a 3 1 was 2 power for haste. 2 power of haste. It's pretty good, I think. I don't know if it's good enough for a popper, but um, pretty decent. Um, then we got Drowsing Pteranodon. This is a 1 in green for a 3-3 three, three with Defender. Now, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Yeah, a lot of people were kind of high on this card. I'm not, I don't really think it's good enough. To see play in Popper. I'm willing to be proven wrong, but uh problem is getting into the four power. Um so the only kind of deck I think that would really want this guy would be like a Stompy deck. And um I think just turning on four power is just a little bit too hard and stompy to to do consistently. Um because it asks that you have like a Rancor or you have you have a pump spell every turn for it to attack. And the difference between the 3-3 three, three here and like a 2-2, two, two, it's just, it's not enough right now. This is like a 4-4, four, four, I could definitely see it, but... Um, the only other thing about this is that it might see play in Stompy, just based on the fact that it doesn't require a different creature to be 4 power or greater. So you can just put like a single Hunger of the Hall pack and then on this guy and he's a 4-4. Four, four. Of course, that's two cards to make a 4-4. Four, four. So, or you know, slap a rancor on him and then he can attack. Mm. But if you're slapping a rancor on him, then you're not slapping a rancor on a smaller creature that might need it more to attack through opponents' blockers. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'd be willing to give it a shot and Stompy to see how it works out. Mm. Now we have um, 
Enchantment, dub, two and a white. It's an aura, and it's just plus two, plus two, first strike, and is a knight. Um, it's just too much mana. It's not going to really do anything for you. We have more efficient auras. And the knight creature type is just not good enough. Um, feed of resistance, plus one, plus one counter target creature control. It gains protection from choice until the end of turn. Um, I don't know. This is like another heroic kind of protection spell. I don't think it's any better than like Emergent Skate that does this twice, for example. Um, you know, Karametra's Breast of Blessing or whatever it is gives plus two, plus two in that effect. I don't really think see this scene play. Uh, finishing blow is an expensive murder. It's not playable. Uh, frantic inventory. When this came out, a lot of us pointed out this is like almost strictly better accumulated knowledge. So this will definitely see play. Um, basically, I think it's just one for one replacement with accumulated knowledge. The thing with accumulated knowledge in these those kinds of decks. Um, was that if you hit a mirror with accumulated knowledge, it's kind of a pain in the butt, right? Because you never want to be the first person to cast accumulated knowledge. You're the first person to cast accumulated knowledge, and your opponent has the advantage for the rest of the game. When they cast their second accumulated knowledge, and then you try and cast yours, and they cast theirs, and then you're just you're one card behind them on a case throughout the rest of the game. This kind of solves that problem, and still gives you the same functionality of a accumulated knowledge so uh, obviously this will see play for sure I think this is the first card that I've reviewed that it will almost certainly see play um, it's like as long as accumulated knowledge would be seeing play which it always has this will see play so yep there's my pick for probably the most impactful card of the set I believe is frantic inventory it's kind of sad that it's basically just a functional reprint um, all right. Um, Gale Swooper, three and a white for a three, two with flying. Gives target creature flying on entering the battlefield until end of turn. Uh, not good enough. Sorry. Vanilla seven, three for five. Nope. Skip right over that. We have a fire breathing elemental dog. Not good enough. Uh, Legion's Judgment, you may look at this and think it's good, it's not. We have this kind of effect in Popper and nobody ever plays it. Library Larcenist, uh, a lot of people were kind of high on this card. I'm not. It doesn't. Three mana for, like, an Ophidian kind of effect. It's, it's never seen play in Popper before, I don't think it'll see up now. Um, I mean, this doesn't ask that you do the combat damage to your opponent, but if you're not doing the combat damage to your opponent, then this thing is probably getting blocked and killed anyway. So then, I don't know. It asked too much. Ophidian's always asked too much of you. Um, a lot of people are kind of high on this Liliana Steward too, but I don't think it's good enough because we have Augur of Skulls, which is basically just better than this guy. Because this guy is, uh, I mean, yeah, he can come down on turn one, and then has a Raven's Crime effect. Opponent gets to shoot, gets to make the choice. He has to not get killed for them to discard. Which, you know, if he gets killed, then it's effectively a discard anyway. Um, I mean, the creature type of zombie doesn't matter that much. So I don't really see this guy seeing a lot of play. I mean, he could maybe fit in the zombies archetype deck, but... I think they want more aggressive one drops, but maybe, 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 maybe he does make that deck a little bit better because he's actually just a one drop zombie and we just don't have a lot of those that are playable. He's playable, but just barely. I mean, just barely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play him personally. I think, and I don't think he makes the deck better or I don't think he makes the deck like, you know, actually leagueable. Um, the next card I want to talk about is Llanowar Visionary, because it's actually pretty sweet. Um, two and a green for a 2-2 Elf Druid, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. 
Um, this basically makes him, you know, a better Phyrexian Rager in green. And he also has the ability to tap to add a green mana, right? He's just a Land War Elf. They slapped Land War Elf and Land War Visioning together, added up their mana costs, and put it all in one card. Um, I'm going to play this card for sure in Tortured Existence decks. Probably is a two, maybe a three of. Um, it's kind of a, an interesting effect because it cycles itself, which is going to be great in Tortured Existence. Um, or sorry, it replaces itself, which is great in Tortured Existence. And then it also, like, if my opponent doesn't kill it, he ramps. Right? He's going to add me, give me one more mana to play with the next turn. So, you know, ramping into something like a, like a weaker ball elder with plus wicker ball elder's effect the next turn is really good and really good for torch existence so um you could also see play in various other mid-rangey rampy kind of decks right there's there's gruel ramp i mean i don't know if it's gruel but i mean there's other kinds of ramp decks that could maybe want to play them mid-rangey ramp decks that could want to play them because uh, this effect is this kind of effect is the thing that will actually make new archetypes in the format i think and uh, we'd have to remain or just be vigilant in seeing what kind of new archetypes might emerge from this dude. So I like him a lot. I think he's one of the best, one of the most interesting cards printed in this set, as far as Popper goes. Lofty Denial is just the worst mana leak. Don't play it. Um, I think it's enough said about that. The makeshift battalion's a two and a white for a three two. When it and at least two other attacks, two other creatures attack, put a plus one plus one counter makeshift battalion. Um, like many things that were spoiled here, there it's three mana, so it's just not playable. Uh, it just costs too much mana to do too little. Um, for aggressive creatures, you really just you really want two mana or less with an effect. Like if this was a two mana, let's say. This is a two mana two two. It would be actually kind of playable, I think, in like a white weenie, but it's not. Mistral Singer, um, flying prowess two two for two and a blue. It's not good enough, badly. Um, too much mana for one thing. For another thing, we have this kind of effect. I don't remember the name of the card, but we have this kind of effect where it's a two two flying for two and a blue that asks you to, whenever you cast a instant or sorcery spell you get it gets plus one plus one and nobody plays that card so not good enough mystic skyfish two and a blue for you three one and whenever you draw your second card each turn it gets flying mm, nope not good enough man three mana pride malkin is cute but uh not good not good enough i don't think three mana two and a green for a 2-1 cat. When it enters, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, and each creature with a plus one plus counter has trample. Mm, nah. Just not good enough, I don't think. Again, three mana in an aggro deck is just not good enough. Uh, Rambuxious Mud is actually kind of interesting. So we have three white white for a 3-4 uh, dog. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Now, I could be wrong, but I think this is the first time Popper has this effect on a card without kicker. Right, so Core Sanctifiers is the only other comparable thing. Core Sanctifiers, for, for the record, I think is actually better than this, but... But... And actually, the double white mana costs in this card is what maybe makes this not playable in Popper, but... I think just um, it's the first time that we have this kind of effect on an ETB creature. So this might actually say play in a sideboard. Uh, a sideboard, for example, like a Tron. Although again, the double white might actually make that not playable. But this is interesting because you can. We just don't. We don't have this effect on a creature that we can flicker. So this might actually see play. Keep an eye out for it. Uh, if I was playing Tron, I'd probably try it in the sideboard, right? It means that you don't have to play 
or maybe you don't play like Ancient Grudge or Ray of Revelation or maybe you just stuff these guys as a two of in the board instead of Ancient Grudge plus Ray of Revelation. Probably not, but it's an idea. Uh, Rousing Reed, a lot of people were kind of high on this one. I don't think it's that good. Um, it's an aura, two and a blue for when it enters the battlefield, draw two cards and discard a card. So it just replaces, I mean, it's just, it's, um, it replaces itself basically, right? It doesn't, it one for ones itself. And then Chain of Creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. Uh, the only way this card is good, I think, is in some kind of like a, like a madness shell, uh, blue green madness, maybe like tireless tribe. But uh, it doesn't have flash, so I don't know. I, I don't see it really seeing play. Um, I guess it's enough about that. Sabertooth Mauler, three and a green for a three three at the beginning of your end step. If a creature died this turn, put a plus one plus one counter to Sabertooth Mauler and untap it. It's kind of got a, like a pseudo vigilance kind of effect here, uh, although you can't, you know, ensure that a creature dies every turn. Um. And then at best it's a four four for four on the turn it comes down. Eh. Ah, not really playable. Secure the scene. Four and a white for a sorcery. Exile tar target non lean permanent. Controller creates a one one white soldier cro to token. We have stuff that's better than this. Not playable. Find Megalodon. Five blue blue for a five seven shark with hexproof. Um, and then whenever it attacks, you scry one. That's not bad. I mean, maybe a reanimator strategy wants this. This is another reanimation target. Um, it's big. It's going to be really hard to kill. And then it has a little bonus for whenever it attacks. Um, no evasion on it, which kind of makes me sad, right? I don't know how you would evade it and make it more evasive. I don't know, maybe creatures with power less than two can't block this or something like that, but um I don't know. It might seem playing like a reanimator strategy, but reanimator's kind of a tier three deck, so I don't know. Probably not. Spirit of Malevolence, so we have better creatures than this that do this effect. When it dies, each opponent loses one life, each game one life. It's two mana for a two one. Eh, don't think so. One mana one three staunch shield mate. Eh, I mean, this is decent, but it's basically just a big blocker, and without, without a bonus effect, I think we can do better, especially in like a white weenie kind of a deck. It's just not, you want something more aggressive than that, um, or something like Gain's Life, right? If you're trying to find a blocker, you want something like Airshin Cleric as a card that exists in White Weenie, and that's a 1-3, but it also gains you 3 life on the battlefield, so... I mean, it also costs one more mana, but... eh, yeah. Alright. Stormcaller. 2 and a red for a 3-2. When it's the battlefield, does 2 damage to each opponent. This one's interesting. I might actually see a little bit of play. Um, you could use it as like a flicker target, for example, as always. Um, and it could also just be kind of like a resilient kind of a threat and burn, right? You kind of look at it as, a, if you look at it as kind of like a Keldon Marauders, then it might actually see play. I think this card is pretty decent. I don't know if we have these kind of effect in Popper. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's decent. Switch response. Destroy target tap creature at instant speed. Um... I'm not so sure we have, you know, I've seen a lot of comments that we have this effect in Popper. I'm not so sure that we do. Not at instant speed and not for this cheap. So, one in a white for destroy target tap creature. I mean, I have to, like, dig through Scryfall and make sure. But I don't think we do. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll check it out after, after I finish going through the set. I'm gonna type this in the chat to uh, remind myself to check that out later. Uh, Teferi's Proje, two and a blue for a two three with one blue tap, draw a card, discard a card, it's just too much mana. 
and it asks it asks that this creature lives in a, in a format with lightning bolt to even start getting advantage in which you have to spend more mana this card's not good don't play it shuffle snout is another creature that actually might see a little bit of play because when it enters the battlefield it's two and a green for a two two when it enters the battlefield you put a plus one plus counter on it or you gain four life um this card doesn't exist in any other iteration. Um, every other kind of creature you have here that does like the gain four life effect in Popper is uh, you have to sacrifice it, or it costs more mana, or you have to pay, or its body is worse. For example, um, so I don't know. Maybe this one sees play. It's kind of a mid range thing, and if you don't need to gain the life, then you can make it. A three mana three three, which is not great, but it's not bad either. Glorious Steed, four and a white for a three three. Went to the battlefield, create a two two knight feature token with vigilance. Um, so it's five mana for vigilance creatures, or five 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 worth of creatures for five mana, and they have vigilance. Uh, no, probably not. Too much mana, really. It's not a big enough threat. At five mana, you can cast Muldrifter instead. Or Palace Sentinels, or whatever. You know, just things that are actually better than that. Um, Village Rights is kind of the other creature that I'm excited to play, especially in like a Tordex kind of a deck. And it's just Alter's Reap, but one mana cheaper. And I think this card's actually playable. And I think it actually goes in a lot of like aristocrat style decks. Uh, Torch Resistance is one. I know that Kung Fu Trees had talked about um, putting it in like a zombies kind of a deck. And I think this card is very playable. And I think this is probably my second or third pick for the most exciting cards to come out of MF21. Or most actually impactful cards coming out of MF21. I mean, Ulster's Reap has always kind of been borderline playable in a lot of different decks, but this one is one less mana, so it just really doesn't ask that much of you. You're trading in a creature for two cards. And I think that's eminently played. I mean, hell, Mono Black Control could play this, right? You, you trade in a Chittering Rats that can no longer attack for two cards. That's good. You know, Torch Existence, you trade in a Golgari Brown Scale that you had to play early for a, to block for two cards. Um, so yeah, this card really, really good. I think it's very, very playable. Oh, uh, all right. Warded battlements, two and white for a zero three defender. It's a wall. Attacking creatures control you plus one plus zero. Eh, no, too much mana. And then finally, Wildwood Patrol, four mana for a two for a four two with trample. Cost two and green. Nope, too much mana. So. I guess that's it for my set review. Uh, so I'm gonna look up the swift response. I don't think we have this effect in Popper. Um, destroy target tapped creature. Get rid of these filters. Pat Artifact Planeswalker, Ugin. Looking for white. Okay. So there we go. So yeah, this uh, this effect on Popper doesn't previously exist. So Swift Response might actually see a little bit of play. I don't know. Because this is actually instant speed. Uh, everything else is sorcery. So this means like whenever a creature attacks, you can just kill it right away, right? It doesn't even deal the damage to you. So maybe, maybe this one sees play. Guess we'll find out. And 
and that is it for the set review. Maybe maybe there's an exile target tap creature. Let's look that up first. <laughs> Instant sorcery, no difference. No difference at all. Those are all sorceries. No. I do not think green blink green black sacrifice will play a primalkin. It's a three mana two one that gives a guy trample. I don't think that's playable. Or sorry, it gives a guy a plus one plus one counter. I just really don't think that's playful playable. Go back since we actually got people joining us now. Do do do. Sets. M21. Do do do. Common. Search. Oops. I didn't include reprints previously, but I guess I'm treating, including them now. So let's go back to Primalkin. Right. So three mana, two one. When it enters the battlefield, put plus one plus one counter target creature you control. So this asks two things of you. It asks you to have a creature that you can put it on to put this counter on. And then it asks an opponent to care about a two one for three mana. And I don't think anybody does. We can go over them, the reprints too. I don't know if there's any downshifts. Anybody know if there's been, that any of these have been downshifted? Maybe I should look at that. I don't recall that I've ever seen Revitalize in a previous set. You gain three life and draw a card. Seems like I might have seen that before. Roaming Ghost Light? That might be a downshift too. I don't know. Like a. What is that card? Mist Raven, I think. One more power for one more mana. And I can only target non spirits. Maybe that wouldn't have seen play before. Tome Anima. Nope. All right, yeah, none of the other reprints seem like they'll, they're very good, or they'll see any more play. A lot of people were on Twitter were super surprised by Grass of Darkness. They weren't they weren't aware this was already in Popper because <laughs> they've never seen it. So like, yeah, you haven't seen it for a reason. It's not very good in Popper. Does not kill Gurmag Angler. Defile's not better. I mean, it is, but. But at two, but you'd think that you might have seen this play in like Affinity, for example, played against Affinity, because it is a good card to bring in like versus Affinity. Doesn't ask that much of you, and it is a good card in general. Like this is just a really good card, but not good enough for Popper, basically. This is the problem. Anyway, so super excited by Land War Visionary. By Village Rights, and what was the other one I pointed out earlier? Uh, Drowsing Tyrannodon, uh, Colossal Dreadmaw, obviously. I mean, this is format breaking right here. Col Colossal Dreadmaw. 
six mana for a six six. That's just that's value. Six six trample. Um, Daybreak charge is the other one that I pointed out. It's actually pretty good. Three mana, or sorry, two mana for three one enters the battlefield target creatures plus two plus zero until end of turn. Like this just makes white weenie able to be a little bit more aggressive. So I think this is actually playable. Daybreak Charger. Um, and then Frantic Inventory, obviously, that'll see tons of play. Just It's just a straight up one for one placement of Accumulated Knowledge. That's good. And you don't have to play the silly Accumulated Knowledge sub-meta game whenever you hit a mirror. Uh... Liliana Stewart maybe goes into zombies. Probably not. Um, what else? Rambunctious Mutt maybe sees play just because it's a flickerable thing that can actually hit artifacts and enchantments. So, which is not something that we have already in Popper in this color. Or in white. White, white, whatever. So that might actually see play. So I guess there's when I pull off five cards there. Let's see her. Village rights. Land of War Visionary. Uh, rambunctious Mutt. Liliana Steward. Yes, yes, that uh, that unicorn is only destroys enchantments, and you have to sacrifice it to destroy the enchantment. <clears throat> um, what else did I point out? Liliana Steward, frantic inventory. Daybreak Charger, Drowsing Pteranodon, uh, Find Megalodon, Stormcaller, I pointed out. Swift Response. Another one that I pointed out, Swift Response, because it's unique. And I think that was it. Oh, Truffle Snout. Oops. I think that was it. If you guys saw anything else that caught your attention, obviously. Colossal Dreadmaw. Hi. Anything else you guys saw or want to talk about? Look at this list, make sure I didn't see anything else. sound to like a different device. It's not my headphones. Oh, 
Is it on? Why do kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? I don't know. What are you talking about? Because it's good? I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but I'm practically a kid, so... Oh. <laughs> uh, gotcha. The memes. All right. Um, that's it for me. I'm going to kill the stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll post it on YouTube later.